I would like to greet you this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We count it a joy and a blessing to worship with you this morning. My wife and I are privileged to be here in Mombasa for the first time, and we have had a wonderful time. Our country is landlocked. Even my firstborn brother does not know what an ocean looks like. You know, there are things that you don't appreciate in this life until they are taken from you. And I want to say to you, I appreciate this place so much. It took my mother 86 years for her to see an ocean. So when you talk about the book of Revelation, where there will be sand by the seashore, they don't even think about. And we want to thank God that we can be here and behold his nature. For God reveals himself in many ways. One of the things that I've heard in this place is the singing in the church. I mean, as I listen to the singing, I would keep quiet and listen, and as you were leading here in front, uh, those choir, not the choir, but the choristers, I could tell that you are singing with energy and conviction. And that's what it means to be at church. And I appreciate that. Keep on doing that. Listen to the youth, young people, it's possible to be joyous in Christ without a can of liquor. Christ gives us joy that abides forever. And as I listen to the choir, your theme is nothing else other than Jesus Christ. And in Jesus and him alone, I am satisfied. And it's a joy to be a Christian. I want to say to you today, we need to let the world know that in Jesus, we are joyous. We are not only happy, but we are joyous. And there's a difference between the two. Happiness depends on happenings. It happens that I have a new car, I am happy. It happens that I have a new girlfriend, I am happy. It happens that I have a wife, I am happy. What about when all those things are gone? Happiness is from outside inside, but joy comes from within. And joy stays forever. So joy does not depend on circumstances, but joy changes circumstances. That's why today our theme is too blessed to be stressed. When you know Jesus, you are too blessed to be stressed. And that is what I want to talk to you about. This is the theme of our message this morning, too blessed to be stressed. There are times in this life when we are too stressed to be blessed. I don't know if you are with me. When you are too stressed to be blessed, even when God says, you are my child, I love you, I want you to come and walk with me, you don't hear the voice because all you are thinking of are the stresses and the challenges of this life. When you are too blessed to be stressed, you will take the hand of Jesus and you walk with Jesus. Allow me to submit to you this morning that even before you have anything, any tangible thing, you are blessed. How do I know that? Oh, allow me to welcome my, my two daughters. By the way, we are blessed with two, two daughters in our marriage and they are away in school. And we just want to welcome them online as they are worshipping with us this morning from far away. I want to say to those beautiful girls, welcome. It's a joy to worship with you online. Allow me to say to you, when you go to the word of God, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, as God speaks to Abraham, Abraham has no child. Isaac is not born yet, but he holds on to the promise of God. And God says to him, that all the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. I don't know if you are with me. His name was Abraham, and God changes his name to Abraham, father of Nathan, before he even has a single child of his own. Are you following me? So, as children of God, we do not go around looking for blessings. Blessings come looking for us because we belong to Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 29, rather chapter 28 and verses 1 and 2. We read it in our lesson study. The Bible says, if you listen to my voice and take my voice seriously indeed, these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. We are used to being overtaken by vehicles, right? 
But God says to you and me, while we are here, stay the pulpit today here on sabbath morning god says to me the blessings have gone ahead and they are waiting for me tomorrow so those who don't understand the god that blesses us are moving around looking for blessers but we are blessed and highly favored and on the sabbath we are not only blessed and highly favored we are blessed and highly flavored by the presence of the lord that's not our topic for today. I just was, was just explaining the, the topic that we are looking at. That in Jesus we are satisfied. And indeed it's a joy to know Jesus. The Bible tells us something here. It has been read in your hearing. So I'll not go back and read in the interest of time. Let us pray together. Father, once again this morning I surrender myself and your church in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible reads in Luke chapter 19 verse 1 that Jesus had entered Jericho and he was passing through Jericho. He was not there to stay. He was there passing on. He was on his way going somewhere else. And a man by the name of Zacchaeus realized that this is an opportunity that at times knocks on your door only once. And therefore he decided, I am going to grab this opportunity. And he decided to act immediately. And I want to say to you this morning, if you are here in this church, under my voice, wherever you are, if ever time comes for you to act, never ever postpone it. Act now, for Jesus is ready to bless you. I hope you hear my Southern African accent. All right? There are times when I struggle uh, to get uh, to, to be heard. So if you don't hear me, just lift up your voice, I mean your hand. I will know that I've lost you. I can also pronounce in the Kenyan way, by the way. It just depends who, who, who taught you English. Because for, for us it is messy, but for you it can be mercy, depending. But we are saying the same thing. It doesn't matter. And then verse 2 says, a man by the name of Zacchaeus. You know, this name means purity or innocent. But when you look at this man's story, the name and the character, I mean the character and the behavior of the man leaves a lot to be desired. Because he was a tax collector. And the Bible tells us that he was not only a tax collector, but he was a chief tax collector. Now this tells me something, my pastor. And thank you for the warm welcome, by the way, to your church. This tells me that if you are a chief tax collector... That means you are not supposed to be on the street, but you are supposed to spend time in the office. But we will hear about Zacchaeus, whether he spent time in the office. He was a social outcast according to the Jews. Why? Because he was working for the Roman kingdom that was ruling the Jews at the time, and the Jews were not happy with this, that a Jew can be a sellout and work for the oppressing government. And the Bible tells us that he was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was what? He was very rich. Filthy rich. That's what the Bible tells us. Now allow me to share with you why this man would be so filthy rich as a tax collector. If the Kenyan government wanted only 100 shilling as tax from you and from me, when Zacchaeus come, he will charge you and me 300 shilling. And 200 shilling will go into his pocket, while 100, my elder, will only go to the government. And this was a man who believed that everything that he had made him what he was. A man by the name of Butley, when he comments on this story, he says, if Zacchaeus came and found you driving a car, he will charge you tax for your existence, for you as a person, and then he will charge you tax for each and every of the car and then charge you the body of the car and then charge you even the steering wheel tax. You can imagine how much money this man had. So in other words, if he found you rich, he will leave you poor. If he found you poor, he will leave you poverty stricken. You won't have anything at all. So he was filthy rich according to the Bible. In other words, he had all the money he needed. He had the house he needed. He had the dollar power. 
or the king and shilling power, whatever he needed, he just pressed the button and he had it there. He didn't need a credit card. He needed a debit card for he had all the money that he needed. He needed not to go and pay for a loan. He would be the one borrowing people money. He was committed to being rich. It doesn't matter what happens to you. All he was interested in was to get rich. Whether by crook or by hook, he was ready to be rich. That is Zacchaeus for you. But today I want you and me to answer one question. One question. Why would such a rich man run to see Jesus? You will agree with me that most people will, will look for Christ when they are in trouble. They will look for Jesus when they don't have money. And they are praying, Lord, may I have a breakthrough. And they are praying, Lord, may I have a child. Zacchaeus had children. Allow me to say to you, verse 3 tells me that Zacchaeus was short in stature. And yet, he came to see Jesus. There is no one, there is nothing, there is nobody in this world that can stand between you and Jesus. When you want Jesus with all sincerity. And the Bible tells us that Zacchaeus ran and he climbed a tree. Why would such a dignified man, you can say a first citizen in that particular time, go and climb a tree with such dignity, such a rich and wealthy man will go and climb a tree just to see Jesus. Why, my elder? This is the question we need to answer today. Allow me to say to you, Zacchaeus was powerful. He had power. He was not praying for power. He was powerful. Zacchaeus had a position. He was not asking for a position. He needed not to pray for that, but he wants to see Jesus. Zacchaeus was wealthy. You know, I can imagine the shoes he wore. When he came for Sabbath school, it was one pair of shoes. And when he, he came back for divine service, it was a different pair of shoes. And when he came for the afternoon program, the man would show off. He was a first citizen. He had the best car in the world. You can think of the house, maybe triple story, maybe quad story, whatever story that he had. He always dressed to kill. That was Zacchaeus for you. Think about the woman, Mrs. Zacchaeus. Maybe when she came in the morning, she was in a burgundy. When she came in the afternoon, she was in a rosary one. When she came in the evening, Mrs. Zacchaeus was in green. She had everything that she needed. But the question is, why would he need Jesus? Why would he need Jesus? He was famous and he was popular. He was not sick or hungry. He needed not to be visited. He didn't have a term paper to submit. That was Zacchaeus. He had no problem with his, his, his marriage. Everything was okay. He didn't need a job. He was working. He had money. He had everything that he needed according to the standard of this world. But the question is, why would he want to see Jesus Christ? That's the question that we need to answer this morning. Allow me to suggest to you that there may be this that has happened in Jesus, in Zacchaeus' life for him to want to see Jesus. It could be that he did not trust the people who were collecting tax and bringing it to the office. And therefore he decided he himself in person will go out and collect tax. You know, when you are a cheat in life, you don't trust anyone. Because you think they are just like you. And therefore he stepped out of the office this particular day, he went out and he knocked on the door of a house. And as he knocks on the door, a small boy comes out. I don't know to move. Okay. As he knocked on the door, a small boy comes out. And as the small boy comes out, he looks at Zacchaeus and he says to him, Zacchaeus, my father is blind. And my father has no money for tax. He said, I should tell you that he has been going out begging, but he has not much for you to be able to collect for tax. And then Zacchaeus said, I want to see your father. Where is your father? And Zacchaeus comes in, and he comes before blind Bartimaeus. The story is found in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. He finds Zacchaeus and Bartimaeus, and he says to blind Bartimaeus, 
One thing you should know is that my name is Zacchaeus. I'm a collector. I'm sorry. I'm doing my duty as a Roman, a Roman employee. One thing you must know is that I'm not the one responsible for your blindness. Thank you. I am not the one responsible for your blindness. Therefore, you must pay tax now. If you don't pay tax now, I'll throw you in prison. But Zacchaeus, I mean, Bartimaeus tried to plead to say, I've been out several days as Zacchaeus, trying to gather as much as I can, but I couldn't gather much. People are stingy nowadays. You know there was COVID, Zacchaeus, and nobody has money. Please have mercy on me. And Zacchaeus says, you don't play with me. I am leaving, but I'll be back. And then the blind Bartimaeus says to him, Please, come back after 20 days. I think the Lord would have done something for me. And Zacchaeus leaves this place. Before he leaves, he's wondering, should I have mercy on him? Should I have give him grace? Or should I express greed? Now, instead of being gracious, he decides to be greedy. And he says to him, I'll be back, and I'm going to collect everything that you have. He leaves. He's very angry. He's worked up. And he goes on to the next door, and he knocks again. And when he knocks on this door, you find the story in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. And as he knocks on this door, a lady comes to the door, says, Hi, Mr. Zacchaeus, how are you? And then the lady says to him, Mr. Zacchaeus, I know you are here for text, but I want to plead with you. If you can just stand here and listen, you will hear the voice of my husband. He's at the graveyard. We have spent all the money for tax in trying to get his health back. But up to this hour, we don't have him back in the house. That's why you hear him shouting there and yelling at the top of his voice. They got chains to chain him, but unfortunately, no chain can hold him down. Please, Mr. Zacchaeus, have mercy on me. Please, have compassion on me. Zacchaeus was caught between compassion and corruption. And guess what he chooses? corruption right and then the lady says please have mercy on us maybe after 20 days you can come back you will find we have something and Zacchaeus says these guys may have talked to each other why are they all saying come back later he gets even more worked up he is even more angry and then he goes to the next door we find the story in Luke chapter 8 verses 43 to 50 and then he knocks on this door there is no sound whatsoever then finally he hears some sound, come in. And then he opens the door. He follows and he finds a lady lying on bed, emaciated. She has had a problem for 12 years. Blood is just letting out of her body. And he says to Zacchaeus, Mr. Zacchaeus, I am sorry. I spent all the money I had to try and get my health back, but I could not get my health back. Please have mercy on me. Please, Mr. Zacchaeus, have mercy on me. This time he is caught between money and mercy. And what does he choose? He chooses money. And he says to the lady, I'm not the one responsible for your problem. And you should not die before you pay tax. If you ever die before you pay tax, we will make sure that your corpse is actually taxed twice so that the government gets its money back. You can imagine, the man was money-minded, no mercy at all, very selfish. And he leaves that place. Now, you know, in this house, because of the blood, there are green flies all around. Even as he walks, he holds his nose. He tries by all means to try and stay there until he gets the money, but he gets that done. And then finally, he stands up and he leaves. And he's so angry. This is a very bad day for him, very bad day for business. And then he goes to the last door. He knocks on the last door. Actually, here he didn't even have to knock. We find the story in Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. When he gets there, people are already gathered, like we are gathered. And he comes and he finds the people there. And he says to them, where is the owner of this house? And they say to her, she is over there. She is mourning her only son. And then Zakia says, I'm not the one responsible for the son's death. I'm only doing my duty. I just need to collect tax. And then he goes to the woman between sobs and says, Madam, you must pay tax now. 
And the woman says, the little money that I had, I went to buy a coffin for my, for my son. And he's here, and I'm trying to make sure that I give him a decent burial. Please, maybe after the funeral, come back. Maybe people would have given me something, Mr. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus says, these people, I think, have talked about this thing. Now they know that I'll be coming, and they've decided to have a similar story. None of them has money. What am I going to do with them? And then, unfortunately, people plead with him there. He's caught between sympathy and selfishness, and guess what he chooses? Selfishness. And the lady cries and pleads, and ultimately he says, I am leaving. But remember, you have to pay tax also for the graveyard where you are going to bury your son. And off he goes. Thank God, after 20 days, Zacchaeus comes back. And he goes to the first house. He knocks on the door. And as he knocks on the door, a man comes to the door. He's no longer a boy this time. And as the man stands before Zacchaeus, towering over him, Zacchaeus looks up and he says, taking the number, it looks like it's a wrong house. I was here some 20 days ago, and I came to the place of a man who is blind. His name is Blind Bartimaeus, but I see a man who can see me. And Blind Bartimaeus says to him, Zacchaeus, you are not, a wrong, not at a wrong number. This is the right place. I am the one who was blind, but now I see. And I want to say to you, Zacchaeus, there is a man they call Jesus. Come in, I want to tell you my story. A few days after you left, I went out and begged and sat there. And as I was sitting, I heard commotion around me. And I asked them, what is going on? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And as I heard this, I shouted at the top of my voice and said, Day, Day Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what, Zacchaeus? The people around me were saying, Jesus is not for your type. You keep quiet. But the louder, the, the more they said that, the louder I shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what, Zacchaeus? Jesus turned around and he came to where I was and as he was turning around, he said to them, call him to come over. I went to Jesus, and you know what, Zacchaeus? Jesus touched my eyes, and now I can see. And Zacchaeus says, wow, what is this happening? And then the son will say, no, daddy, I am the one who saw everything. This is... And the father will say, keep quiet, this is my story. Let me tell my story. And then the father would say, wait, my son, now let us sing a song to Zacchaeus. And then he says, here is your money, Zacchaeus, but we have a song to sing to you. My son and I and my family, we are going to sing to you about the amazing grace of Jesus. And they sang a song, Amazing Grace. Where is the, where is the, the choristers? Where are the choristers? They sang the song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. I once was blind, but now I see. Please, take on, the, on that song. And you just uh, wait here because we are still going to sing together. <clears throat> Let's sing together Amazing Grace, song number 108. Yeah, just one stanza. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that separates like me. I was lost. Zacchaeus is wowed, he's surprised. Who is this Jesus? And then he gets his money. No, just stay there. We are here together. We are preaching together today. You don't have to go down. So he says, who is this Jesus? So he leaves. He says, well, let me just brush this aside. And then he goes and he goes to the next door. When he gets to the next door, he knocks again. And guess who comes out? 
Now a man not like Moesi, with biceps and triceps and six pack, and he towers over Zacchaeus, and he says to you, oh Zacchaeus, I heard you are coming. My wife told me you were here for the tax. Come in, come on in. And he picks him up as though he's just picking a leaf, you know, so light. And he brings him into the house. He says, welcome, you are a dignified man. He says, I'm sorry, sir. I think I've come to a wrong house. He says, no, you are in the right house. There was a wrong disease here, but Jesus passed by. And the man says to him, Zacchaeus, sit down. Let me tell you my story. On that particular day, Jesus was coming out of the boat. I was by the graveyard. I was like a dead man. But when the demons which were in me, about 2,000 of them, when they saw Jesus, the mistake they made was to run to Jesus. And when they got me there, they knelt me before Jesus. And Jesus said, out of him. All the chains and everything was gone in the presence of Jesus. Zacchaeus, you must meet Jesus. And as the wife hears the man telling the story, the wife says, I am the one who knows and who saw what happened. There was joy in the house. And then the husband said, okay, to settle this matter, let us sing Zacchaeus a song. And they began to sing Zacchaeus a song. A wonderful savior is Jesus, my Lord. We're just going to do one stanza of that. A wonderful savior. Is Jesus my Lord? Zacchaeus thinks, am I dreaming? Why is it that they have a similar story? Who is this Jesus that they are talking about? Who is this man? And then he brushes and says, hey, well, I need to make money. He doesn't forget that he needs money in his life. It's not mercy, but money for him. It's not compassion, but corruption for him. It's not a... <clears throat> You know, uh, mercy but money for him. It's not a uh, sympathy but it's selfishness for him. It's not a uh, grace but greed for him. He goes driven by greed and knocks on the next house again. And as he knocks this time around, as he approaches the house, it appears like somebody has just been watering the, the plants. It appears the stoop has been polished and, you know, it's shining. It's not as dirty as it was before. He looks for the flies. There are no flies. It's all beautiful order that he hears from the... I mean, he, yeah, in my language you hear, you don't smell. It's just the beautiful order that he smells from the house. And as he smells the order from the house, he wonders, is this the right place? And then he's hesitant, but he knocks on the door. As he knocks on the door, he could hear, feel the, you know, the footsteps of a lady coming to the door. Qua, 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 to the door. And then she opens the door. As she looks at this figure, which was emaciated on the bed, it's now Coca-Cola physiogram. She looks so beautiful. The hair has just been done at the salon. Everything is so changed about her. And then she says, oh, I am sorry. I'm looking for a lady who had an issue of blood. He says, you are right, Mr. Zacchaeus. It's in the past. Now I don't have the issue anymore. But come in. Let me tell you my story. You know what, Zacchaeus? A few days after you left, I heard Jesus was in the area. 
And I decided to pull myself to the place. And you know what, Zacchaeus? When you come to Jesus, it's not that Jesus does not know that you are coming to him. It's not you looking for Jesus, but it's Jesus looking for you to relieve you of your pain. It appeared like every small step that I took, Jesus took five steps. Until I came to him and I touched the hem of his garment. And you know what, Zacchaeus? The moment I touched the hem of his garment, all the blood stopped flowing. And I want you to know that the man they call Jesus has changed my life. I want you to know that I didn't touch him, but he touched me. Before you leave, because I don't have any child here, I'm going to sing a solo to you. He touched me, and I'm no longer the same. Shackled by a heavy burden. can touch you this morning. Jesus can change your life even right now, this morning, in this place, wherever you're listening from. my sister if you are here and you are shackled by a heavy laden Jesus can change your life now he can he's still the same yesterday today and forevermore he wants to set you free he wants you to know you are too blessed to be stressed and now Zacchaeus is confused how can this be and then he leaves he says I need money anyway I need money and he goes to the last house and he knocks on the door. This time he has to knock. And as he knocks, he's the small boy that comes. And he looks at Zacchaeus. They are almost the same what? The same height. Zacchaeus, yes, I heard that you were here when I was dead. And then the mother hears from the house. How can you be keeping the, 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 the visitors at the door? Bring the people in. We, that's not African culture. You cannot do that. Let the visitors come in. No, mommy, I want to tell my story. It's not your story. It is my story. I'm the one who prayed. I'm the one who saw what happened. So he comes in. And then he sits down. And the mother says, Zacchaeus, a few days after you left, we were singing, going to the graveyard. Oh, pass me not, gentle Savior. And we're singing that song that at times we can't even pronounce the lyrics. I don't know about here, but back home there's a song they sing. You won't even know what they are saying. It's just, You don't even know what they are saying. That is a way of expressing their pain and sorrow. And as this company was coming, Zacchaeus, my company, and I was crying, and they were carrying my son, a man they called Jesus came with another company. And as the two companies meet, met, Jesus said, stop, what is happening here? And he saw me crying. He didn't even have to ask actually. He just came to me and said, don't cry. Allow me to say to you young people, elderly people, children that are here, it's only Jesus in the midst of trouble who can say, don't cry. Because when you see the face of Jesus, it is written, peace, in the midst of trouble. So the problems of this world have no power in the presence of Jesus. It is not the absence of trouble that gives us peace. But it is the presence of Jesus in the presence of troubles that give us peace. 
That's why the songwriter says, with Jesus in the vessel, I can smile at the storm. For he is able. This is the Jesus I'm talking about. Stressors in life will come, but we pass our stress on to Jesus. And then the lady goes on to tell the story, and the son keeps on interjecting. And then the mother said, the only way before you get your money, we can solve this matter, is we need to sing you a song. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and there will be time no more. This is the song we want to sing and dedicate to you, Zacchaeus, because Jesus has done great things in my life. This man they call Jesus is everything to me now. You can take all the money, take my house, take everything and give me Jesus. It's enough for me. Go ahead. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the sand of us shall gather over on the other shore, and the Lord is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the Lord, when the Lord is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Yes. Zacchaeus is reminded that even this life, there is a day you will die, and if you don't have Jesus, that's the end of your life. That's the end of your life. I want to say to you, when Zacchaeus left this place, as he left this place, he realizes, I thought I'm rich, but I'm poor without Jesus. As he leaves this place, he thought I am successful, but he realizes without Jesus, I'm a successful failure. He realizes that I've been happy, it's erratic, but I need joy that I found in those people's lives. Oh, his eyes now are opened. He can realize that he thought he's rich, but he's poor. He realizes that he has been need-minded. He has not been seed-minded from Jesus. He realizes that these people's lives are not in pieces, but they have peace in Jesus. I want to say to you, church, when we have Jesus, we are too peaceful to be in pieces. We are too, too blessed to be stressed in Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us that this man then says, I must see Jesus. Who is this man? And Zacchaeus, based on the experience of others who have been set free by Jesus, decides, I need the same freedom in Jesus. And he runs and he climbs a tree. And when he climbs a tree and he sits up there, Jesus comes and stops under the tree. And he says to him, Zacchaeus, come down. Today I must go with you to your house. Allow me to say to you, church, it doesn't matter who you are, baptized or not, deacon or not, pastor or not, elder or not, Jesus wants to go to your house with you today. It's a day of religious liberty. But unless and until you are free in Jesus, you can never talk about religious liberty. Because when Jesus has set you free from hate, when Jesus has set you free from loneliness, when Jesus has set you free from unfaithfulness, when Jesus has set you free from disobedience, then you can stand and say, I am free in Jesus indeed. John chapter 8 verse 36 says, when the sun sets you free, you are free in what? You are free indeed. I'm here this morning to declare to anyone who may be bound by anything, maybe your life is a life of sorrow, a life of sadness, a life of loneliness, a life of joblessness, a life of moneylessness, a life of trouble in your house, your child your children have left home. You wonder what you can do. I want to say to you today, the man they call Jesus is saying, I am here to set you free. Is there anyone in this church this morning 
who says, I want the same Jesus to give me joy in my life. If you are such, stand with me. This Jesus to be the Lord of my life, to set me free, that I may be too blessed to be stressed. I always give an opportunity to people who are not baptized or who want to recommit their lives to Jesus. And I call them forward because I'm looking at my time and it's better to, to finish within the time than after time because they are saying, blessed are the brief for they shall be invited again. Now, I don't know if there is anyone here who says, Pastor, I've heard it, it's enough. I want to pass it on over to Jesus. And I want him to bear this burden. Why? Because he says, my yoke is light. Number two, he says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Do you know why we are stressed most of the times? We are trying to handle things that Jesus says, you have no power to handle, pass them on to me. And that's why our hearts are in pieces. He says you can be at peace as long as you allow me to handle this. The man they call Jesus this morning is calling one person who says, I want to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I want Jesus to set me free. If you are such this morning, please put your hand up wherever you are. You want to be baptized in the name of Jesus. You want to recommit your life to Jesus this morning. Is there one this morning who says whether today or in the future I want to give my life to Jesus and I want to be baptized. I want to be too blessed in Jesus to be stressed and I want to give my life to him. I'll call the second group. Oh, is that a hand? Come. You are never too young for Jesus. You are never too young for Jesus. You are never too young for Jesus. How old are you? Six. This young man? Seven. Oh, okay. He has corrected himself. He's seven. Is there anyone more who is coming to Jesus today? Come. Wherever you are, come to Jesus. This is a time for you to come to Jesus. And it's so, it's coincidental that this young man is seven. I was in Malawi preaching and a little girl came forward after the message. I was preaching about the power of Jesus. As I tell this story, feel free to come forward. As, 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 as I finished preaching, this young girl came. God bless you, my brother. I, I, by the way, I don't make long appeals because Jesus is in this place and has been talking to you. As I... I finished preaching. I was talking about the power of Jesus. And this young girl came forward. She was only seven years of age. And she said to me, Pastor, are you sure your Jesus can set me free? Now, I, I was not, <clears throat> I didn't speak the local language. So he had a pastor like our pastor who was translating. And she, I said to her, yes, Jesus can set you free. I said, what is it that has happened to this seven-year-old? that she wants, she asked me such a difficult question. And then she says to me, Pastor, every night, around 11, 12 midnight, a lady comes, and when she comes, she will spread a sheet in front of my house, and there are 12 other children, and as we climb, and, and as she comes, she calls my name, there is no electricity, and when she calls my name, the door opens, without me turning the lock. And there is light in the house. And when she calls me by name, I get on the sheet, and then the sheet is lifted above the ground, and we go to the graveyard. We spend the whole night there until 4 o'clock when she brings us down to our houses. And I said to her, but how is the, does this happen? She says, well, I don't know, but that's what happens. All I'm asking you, Pastor, is can your Jesus set me free? You know, sometimes you are tried after preaching the sermon. And thank God the Spirit said, say to her, yes, Jesus can set you free. He said, now how do you set me free, Pastor? I said, I don't have the power. I said, I'll teach you a prayer. This is the prayer we taught her. Of course, through a translator. Lord Jesus, please help me. 
the girl for 15 minutes, she would say, Lord, help me and skip the name of Jesus. Because she knows there is power in the name of Jesus. The demons were holding her back from saying the name of Jesus. We prayed and after 15 minutes, we had a breakthrough. She, had, she said, Lord Jesus, help me. I said, that is a security enough for you. She left. After four days, I said to the elders, where is that young girl? As she came that the corner, I could see joy beaming on her face. Before she was so frustrated and she shouted for the first time in English, Pastor, there is power in the name of Jesus. And I said, what happened? She said, exactly what you said. I said, no, I was not there. Then she said, she came the first day. And you know, as the door opened and light came in, I knelt down and said, Lord Jesus, help me. Immediately, there was darkness. The door closed and she never came back. She says, but she didn't give up. She came back the second day. And I knelt down and I prayed, Lord Jesus, help me. And immediately she disappeared. And now it is the fourth day she has not come back. There is power in the name of Jesus. So the reason why I tell this story is because of this child who is only seven. At times we think they are too small, but the devil already has business for them. There is no soul too little precious in Jesus' eyes. All souls are precious in the eyes of Jesus. And we have to treat them with tender care. The song we are about to sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, was written by Fanny Cross.
What a blessed assurance indeed to know that Jesus is mine. Thank you for the choirs. Thank you for the pastor. Thank you for the church here where we could come and worship and experience your presence. Dear Lord, this hour there are these children that have come to you, both young and old, dear Father. They've decided to take a stand for Jesus. How I pray that Jesus may be their story and you may be their song. I pray, dear Lord, that they may not just know about the man they call Jesus, but that Jesus may be the real deal and the real man in their lives. How I pray that the blessings of heaven and the angels of heaven may hover around them and direct their thoughts each and every day. May they learn, Lord, to read your scriptures and hear you speak to them. May they learn, dear Lord, to pray to you and you hear their prayers and answer them. Thank you for your church, Lord, that has responded to stand and say they want Jesus to be the Lord of their lives until he comes the second time. May you walk into their families, walk into their workplaces, walk into every place where they are. Let them carry the weather of Jesus with them. Father, as a day of religious liberty, help us to be free indeed to pray and to love everyone because of your presence in our lives. Thank you, Lord. May the blood of Jesus rest upon each and every one. May you right now, dear Lord, cause the countenance of your face to shine upon your church and everyone who is here and give us peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our workplaces, peace in every place we go because Jesus is the master who guides our lives. Thank you for the joy and peace you supply us with. Bless the pastor and the leadership of this church. I ask and pray that the Holy Spirit may baptize them on a daily basis. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.